Good morning, everyone. I am Holly Casalato, currently a graduate researcher at UC Santa Cruz. Thank you for joining me today for our case study of enhancing gRPC microservices in high-performance trading systems. This work was done in collaboration with my colleague Yu Kang uh, during my time at Coinbase. I have since transitioned to shift my focus to my uh, PhD uh, work, which continues to explore optimizing RPCs for microservice performance. For today's talk, due to a scheduling conflict, Yu Kang couldn't be here, so I will be presenting our work solo. Let's start by outlining our agenda. So we'll first do a brief introduction on trading system with a focus on its uh, single thread model. Then we will be discussing the two uh, gRPC usage enhancements we implemented, which are transitioning from unary to bidirectional streaming model and then replacing um, protobuf with flat buffers. Uh, we will also cover our, uh, briefly our systematic approach in load testing those enhancements. And lastly, we would like to uh, present our wish list for gRPC, protobuf, and flat buffers um, that we believe could further enhance our system. So let's first do an introduction on trading systems. Trading systems are essentially uh, performance sensitive systems. Um, specific to Coinbase trading system, it's an application written in Go. It is engineered to um, um, process requests with ultra low latency and uh, extremely high um, throughput, specifically achieving um, sub millisecond latency and uh, processing over 10,000 requests per second. At the core of such system lies the matching engine, which internally uses a RAF cluster for its fault tolerance mechanism. Matching engine accepts order requests from the order entry, um, matches them, and then um, generate messages for those matching results to be disseminated to the downstream in the market. As performance is very critical for trading systems, uh, effective trading system must be designed with the maximum eff efficiency of uh, compute resource in mind at all time. Beyond performance, ensuring the uh, correctness of transaction execution is crucial for trading systems. While there are concurrent threads inside the matching engine handling various tasks, to guarantee correctness. Each task must adhere to a strict single thread model at, during execution. This ensures that all transactions are executed sequentially and without risk conditions. But in the meantime, it also requires each task to be designed um, to execute with maximum efficiency. Uh, minimize CPU usage, pre-allocate memory whenever possible, and avoid um, avoiding um, blocking situations. Here's an example of a simple gRPC usage pattern in tra trading systems. In fact, it was the um, model in place before our enhancement work. In this model, an order request arrives as a unary service call. Um, prompting the creation of a separate uh, server-side Go routine to handle the request. Given the heavy traffic pattern in trading systems, this straightforward model um, often results in tens of thousands of Go routines um, to be running simultaneously, uh, leading to resource uh, contention and thrashing. This also could um, cause the latency, uh, tail latency to spike, especially when a blocking go routine has to wait for its turn to be 
uh, rescheduled on the, uh, randomly by um, Go scheduler on the CPU. This chart illustrates one of the key problems um, of the simple usage model we discussed in the previous slide, which is the increasing gap between uh, the average and tail latencies when request volume is high. As you can see, when the request volume increases, the average latency remains relatively stable. However, the tail latency starts to rise significantly. The gap between the average and tail latencies uh, become more prominent at higher throughput levels, especially when the system is handling over 8,000 requests per second. The widening gap indicates that while uh, the majority of the requests are being processed with, within a acceptable time frame, there is a small but critical percentage of requests that are experiencing much longer delays. This could be particularly problematic in trading systems where timing is crucial, as this um, tail latency spikes could um, cause significant performance bottleneck and impact overall user experience. The cause of this issue lies in the thrashing problem we mentioned earlier. As more Go routines are created to handle the increasing volume of requests, they begin to compute for CPU resource, leading to more um, inefficient scheduling and consequently longer delays um, in, for some of the requests. The problem of the simple usage model is further demonstrated by these charts. Let's look at the top graph first. As number of clients increases, um, we see that the throughput initially rises and then it plateaus. The throughput plateau indicates that the system has reached its maximum processing capacity. So adding any more clients does not result in the corresponding rise in throughput. Essentially, the system is saturated. And now look at the bottom graph we see that uh, the tail latency starts to rise significantly around the time when throughput plateaus. The sharp rise of la tail latency is a direct consequence of the system's inability to efficiently manage the growing load, leading to delays for some of the requests. The combination of uh, throughput plateau uh, Throughput plateau and the sharp rise in tail latency clearly demonstrates the limitations of the simple usage model when scaled. The issue of this, um, um, it, the, the cause of this uh, problem is um, the, the, the thrashing that we mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, while the system is able to handle um, a moderate load effectively, it struggled at a higher volume, volume leading to a significant performance degradation. Now let's dive into the details of our enhancement uh, um, work. But before we discuss um, the transition from Unary to, to the streaming model, let's take another closer look at um, the thread model in the unary approach. In this model, uh, when an order request arrives, a server-side Go routine is spawned to handle the request by adding a uh, notify callback channel to the request and then passing the combined struct to the order processing queue. After that, the server go routine blocks until the response to the request is placed by this other order processing thread in um, the notify channel. As we mentioned earlier, this approach um, at times could cause a large number, sometimes unbound, uh, basically unbounded number of go routines to be competing for um, CPU resource, exacerbating uh, the latency spikes. 
So we transitioned from the unary to the bi-directional um, streaming uh, model by using three threads and two um, channels. Um, two of those threads are um, blocking Go routines, um, with one responsible for um, sending re uh, receiving requests and sending back uh, the other sending back responses. The third Go routine um, um, basically picks up requests, process it, and put it in the response channel. And when, um, to avoid getting scheduled off of the CPU, when there's no request to process, it engages in busy spinning. And this approach resolves the uh, issue of uh, unbounded number of Go routines, and it delivers responses in, in the same order as requests come in, which uh, help um, uh, prevent um, uh, unwanted um, tail latency spikes. Um, as one of the uh, blocking Go routine, the Go routine number one executes in this infinite loop. Um, it exits um, gracefully when a termination, termination signal is received. Otherwise, it continuously listening for uh, incoming requests using stream.receive function. The function blocks whenever, uh, until a request is available. And after a request is received, it's placed in this channel. And after that, the Go routine immediately returns to um, listen for the next request. Go routine number two, similarly, uh, is um, also executes in this infinite loop. And um, it retrieves a response from the response channel and attempts to send it using the stream.send function. Um, the, the function blocks until the um, uh, the response is sent successfully, after which it immediately proceeds to retrieve and send the next response. Uh, the coordinator thread is a continuously active thread by either processing a request or engages in busy spinning when there is no request to process. Uh, it's connected to the other two Go routines via those two channels. Um, the, the primary responsibility for the coordinator thread is to process um, requests. Um, um, the busy spinning mechanism helps the coordinator thread to stay on the CPU such that it can pick up the request and process it without delays. And this helps the system to maintain a high level of overall responsiveness. The transition from the unary to bidirectional resulted in per, um, significant performance improvement. Unlike the unary model where the latency spikes were the uh, throughput plateaus, the, the bidirectional streaming model continues to scale effectively. And the result indicates to us that the bidirectional streaming model is better equipped at handling higher throughput without uh, a compromising on latency. This is likely due to its ability to mitigate the resource uh, contention and thrashing problem. Um, now let's move on to our second enhancement, which, in which we replaced protobuf by flat buffers. Um, the motivation behind the shift from protobuf to Flat, buff, uh, flat buffers is to avoid the repeated serialization and deserialization of data across microservices. Um, the top graph shows how uh, data was handled uh, in the trading system using protobuf. As you can see, after data is serialized, um, it needs to be deserialized once more when it enters um, another microservice. And similarly, the deserialized data needs to be serialized when it needs to be stored in the storage system. And this cycle just continues. The repeated serialization and deserialization adds latency and overhead, um, uh, CPU overhead to the system, leading to possible um, performance bottlenecks. Um, look at the bottom uh, uh, diagram. Uh, which shows the new approach using um, the flat buffers. So with the flat buffers, the need for repeated serialization and deserialization is eliminated. When the request uh, arrives, 
Um, there's no need to deserialize it, and instead data is directly accessed from the raw buffers. And later when it needs to get ready to be sent to the next microservice, it undergoes a simple repack uh, operation, which is far less in resource intensive compared to the, um, the full serialization process. And finally, when the data reaches the new microservice, it can be used and repacked as necessary without the overhead of deserialization and serialization. So having gone through the motivation, let's move on to the how. How did we do the migration? Well, first step, we translated field by field um, the schema def definition file from Puddlebuff to flat buffers. And the second step is one of the most challenging and time consuming steps in this uh, migration process, which is to ensure that the migrated flat buffer schema is an exact match to uh, the original protobuf schema. As the internal data representation for these two are differ quite significantly, there is no off the shelf tool that can verify this automatically. To address this, we uh, invested considerable effort uh, in this rigorous double check process. We um, either uh, write custom functions to convert this to you to a uh, common format such as JSON for comparison, or we write custom functions to directly compare them, them to verify that they represent the same data. So these checks are essential to maintaining data integrity uh, uh, throughout the migration process. So now after um, um, thoroughly testing and validating the migrations, uh, the schema migration, and we proceeded to add, um, to implement the code on the client side, we added code to write data into the um, raw buffers. And on the server side, we implemented code to access data uh, uh, from the buffers. So this fully, this enabled us to fully uh, leverage um, flat buffers um, efficient zero copy design. Um, the transition from protobuf to flat buffers also re uh, resulted in um, significant performance improvement across various stages of the request response um, um, cycle. Notably, we saw a seven times end-to-end um, uh, -end latency reduction. Um, this includes receiving requests and processing requests and sending back responses. So breaking down further, we saw 20 times uh, improvement for receiving requests and 15 times for internal processing the messages and 2.5 times for sending back responses. Those uh, results clearly demonstrated the efficiency gains uh, achieved by moving to flat buffers. Um, and next, I would like to briefly mention um, the systematic approach we adopted in load testing the enhancements. Um, pacing is the key technique that we uh, introduced to simulate different real world uh, load scenarios. By varying the sleep duration, we were able to generate um, uh, different levels of uh, traffic load on the system. This enabled us to focus on observing um, how average and tail latency responded to um, under different uh, varying conditions. And by combining the uh, analysis of test data and a detailed system profiling, we were able to identify areas for improvement and effectively uh, optimize our system using empirical data. Uh, this concluded uh, sharing of our enhancement work um, to improve the trading system uh, performance using gRPC. Next, we would like to uh, present our wish list for, based on our experience with gRPC, protobuf, and flat buffers. And this wish list is not intended as criticism, it, and rather it's just um, um, constructive feedback from the field in hopes of uh, help, helping uh, enhancing those very valuable libraries. 
So although we have used three strats to work around the blocking nature of stream that receive and stream that send, we believe a set of non-blocking APIs could uh, greatly help simplifying our implementation and further enhancing uh, performance. Additionally, we, th we think an API to provide visibility into the network level uh, queuing um, would great, it would be invaluable in helping diagnosing and optimizing um, um, the system behaviors under load. Um, although we have transitioned from um, protobuf to flat buffers, we believe that protobuf could greatly benefit performance sensitive applications by, um, enable, by allowing this enableable uh, option for developers to pre-allocate memory for one of fields. Uh, also, we believe allowing, uh, opening some direct and um, partial access to the raw buffers could uh, help with scenarios where low level access of memory is critical. And for flat buffers, right now the codec requires a flat buffer start builder to uh, be used when building a message buffer, and this in turn gets passed to a gRPC send function. And when the message buffer is received, the received function returns a pointer to the root type of the message struct. We believe uh, it would be advantageous if we can unify those uh, processes to streamline buffer handling that could make uh, forwarding data received much easier. Additionally, we were hoping that there will be more integration between gRPC and flat buffers that, um, to allow easier access to data fields without the need of uh, extensive code that will really benefit um, developers working with uh, performance sensitive applications. And with that, thank you all for your time. <laughs>